Hi! In this video, I will be taking a closer look at the wire terminal and making a small game using ArduPy, which is a combination of Arduino and MicroPython. Seed Studio has sent me this cool device called the wire terminal. It is compatible with Arduino and MicroPython and its heart is the SAM D51 microcontroller running at 120 MHz. It is equipped with a 2.4 LCD screen, onboard IMU, microphone, buzzer, micro SD card slot, light sensor and infrared emitter. When you first plug it in, it is preloaded with this game. It offers a lot of possibilities for development and can be used for many projects including tiny machine learning. I was thinking about what kind of project would be best to make on this device and finally decided to make a small retro looking game with ArduPy. ArduPy is created by Seed Studio and is a combination of Arduino and MicroPython. And what it actually means is that you can convert existing Arduino libraries and use them inside your MicroPython code. To install ArduPy, we first need to download the firmware. This can be found on the Seed Studio wiki pages. Then to install it, we simply drag the firmware file onto the Arduino USB drive. I am doing this on Mac OS. The next step is to install ArduPy Ape command tool. This is done using pip command. Make sure you have Python version 3 installed and then paste in the pip install command that we copied from the wiki pages. For an overview of all available ape commands, you can check the ArduPy wiki page. I will link that in the description of this video. Probably the one that you will use the most is the ape shell command that accesses the REPL interface. While we are here, we can check what modules are available inside ArduPy. The most interesting is the machine module. It contains all device specific functions. Like the sprite module. We will be using it extensively while creating our game. So let's dive right in and start coding. First, we need to find a sprite for our ship. I think this Galaga ship will do just fine. In order to show the ship sprite, we need to import the LCD and sprite classes from the machine module. Then we initialize the LCD and the ship sprite objects. Our ship will have the dimensions of 21 by 21 pixels. So we define it here, where we can reference it later. We will also upscale each pixel by a factor of 2. Let's make a variable for that. The ship will be a one-dimensional list, which we will split up into columns and rows. I am using integers to encode the colors. We need to add some rows and columns of zeros, otherwise the sprite will leave a drag when it's moving. Let's first define a create sprite function that will create our sprite on the screen. The create function from the sprite object takes two arguments, which is the width and the height. We will pass it in together with the resize factor. So in actuality, our sprite dimensions will be 42 by 42 pixels. Then we will fill the sprite with black color. In this line, we calculate the length of the list. We could as well use the length function, but we know the dimensions of the sprite, so we might as well calculate it ourselves. Now we create two for loops to create the sprite from the contents of the list. For debugging purposes, I am also printing the created row that will be visible inside the repo shell. The index of the list can now be calculated from the row and column that we are looping. 
Like this we can get the value from the list and set the color. The RGB color is defined by 16 bits. The first 5 bits are for red, then 6 bits for green, and 5 for blue. We can then calculate hexadecimal values for each of the colors. Finally we can plot the pixels on the sprite canvas using the rectangle command. To show our sprite, first we will fill the screen with black color. We call the create sprite function using as arguments the ship sprite object, the list and the x and y dimensions. Then with the push sprite function, we can put the sprite on the screen at given coordinates. With this finished, we can save the code in the main.pi file. The code will be automatically executed and it will show up like this on the screen of the wire terminal. In order to be able to move our ship, we need to access the switches on the device. Looking at the machine module, we have two classes that we can use to access the input pins. The map class includes defines for the buttons. Let's first import the map and pin classes. This will allow us to define the 5-way switch movement for left, right, up and down. There is actually no definition for the down movement but I have found out that it is pin number 61. We can cut the code that we have written earlier and define a gain loop function. With the init on start variable, we will be able to execute the initialization code inside the loop just one time. Now we can paste back the code and adjust the indentation. Adding the ship movement variable will allow us to choose when we want to move our ship sprite. Setting any don't start variable to false will prevent executing the initialization on the second time the loop is iterated. Here we will define the movement of our ship. Left and right will move the ship along the horizontal axis and up and down will do the same for the y axis for vertical movement. We will also move the push sprite function inside the ship movement as we want to update the position of each loop iteration. I have noticed that when the MicroPython code is in a loop, it sometimes prevents me from saving the code on the wire terminal USB drive. For that case, I have added a hold button to terminate the program. To accomplish that, we need to import the sys module which includes the exit function. For the hold button, we'll use the key A button located on the top of the wire terminal. Inside the loop function, we will check if the button has been pressed and then we call the sys.exit function. To finish up, we need to call our game loop function on the bottom of our RGPy script. We can see that the ship can move using the 5-way switch. The only issue we have now is that it is not stopping at the edges. Let's fix that now. Inside the shift movement if statement, we will add some limits to how far the ship can move. As the screen size is 320 by 240 pixels. We also need to take into account the ship dimensions and the resize factor, which is the RF variable. The minus 2 offset stands for the invisible pixels that we defined inside the list. After saving the file, we can see that the ship stays within the screen boundaries. Let's now add the ability to shoot. 
First we define a bullet sprite and give it dimensions. It will be 1 pixel wide and 4 pixels in height. To fire, we will define key C. And for the bullet sprite, we will just use 2 pixels. The other pixel will leave us black. The zeros on the border is to prevent a drag of the sprite. I was not able to create a sprite that is truly transparent and can be defined without these black borders. If you know how to do this, please leave a comment. Inside our init if statement we create the sprite. We only need to do this once as we will be only changing the coordinates of the bullet. The initial position of the bullet will be just above and in the middle of the ship. We will also add a bullet movement variable and a variable to sense when the fire button is released. This will prevent auto fire. So when the button is pressed and we are not firing and the button was previously released, we will set initial coordinates to the bullet. Set the firing variable to true and set the release C button variable to false. If the fire button is unpressed, we set the release button variable to true. If the button is in the firing state, we will first draw the sprite on its coordinates. And when the bullet is moving, we will change the Y coordinate, so it will look as it is advancing on the screen. Finally, when the bullet leaves the screen, we set firing status to false. It seems to be working. We can shoot a missile and re-trigger it every time it leaves the screen. Let's add an enemy sprite. Just like with the ship, we will create a global variable and define dimensions of the sprite. We will base the enemy ship on the Space Invader sprite. The sprite has just one color. So the green pixel list elements will get a 5. We will create the sprite inside the init block, next to the others. and give the ship initial position to test. The enemy will also get a movement state variable and just like the ship sprite, we'll use the push sprite function to display it on the screen. Saving the main.pi file will show the enemy space invader. It would be nice if the enemy ship could move. Let's implement that now. Inside the enemy movement if statement, we will increase the Y coordinate by 1 on each loop iteration. When the enemy ship moves off screen, we will respawn it again at the top, minus the resize factor of the offset sprite height. The enemy ship respawns every time at the same location. Let's add some randomness to it. This version of Arjupy does not have the random module included, so we shall create our own random function that is based on the timer. It is included in the time module, so first we will import it. Inside the random function, we need to multiply the millisecond sticks by a random number and take the modulo, which is the reminder from the division of the maximum possible respawn position. This will give more or less random horizontal location of the enemy ship. First we change the initial position of the enemy ship. And also when it leaves the screen.
When we test it, the enemy ship does indeed appear in random locations. But we are missing something here. There is no collision detection with the ship or the missile. Let's add that next. I couldn't find any sprite collision functions for AlgaPy, so we will write a simple collision function. It will check if the bottom of one sprite collides with the top of another sprite. The function will take a couple of arguments that are the coordinates and dimensions of the two colliding sprites. This drawing illustrates exactly what is happening inside the function. In this line, we check if the coordinates collide and then we set the collision variable to true and return the value. Inside the init block, we initialize two collision possibilities. It is a ship with an enemy and an enemy with a bullet. We set them both to false. We can now check for collision of enemy with the ship. When collision happens, we will set the collision ship with enemy variable to true. We will do the same check for the collision with a fired missile. After the collision of the ship with the enemy, we freeze the movement of the enemy, the ship and the bullet. To destroy the enemy, we simply fill the sprite with black color. This can be of course extended by creating an animation of explosion, but we will keep it simple here. We do the same to the ship and the bullet sprite. To prevent the trigger of the collision, we can raise the invisible enemy ship by 5 pixels. Otherwise we won't be able to get out of this loop. When the missile hits the ship, we will also destroy the enemy in the same way as before, by filling the sprite with black color. We have to use the push sprite function to erase it from the screen. The same is done with the bullet sprite. Now we can reset the coordinates of the enemy ship to outside the visible area on top of the screen. And bullet to the initial coordinates just before it was fired. We also set the firing state to false which will allow us to press the fire button again. Now we need to delete the sprite from the current position and recreate it from the list. There might be other ways to do this, but this solution worked for me. We will also recreate the bullet sprite in the same way.
And finally we can set the collision variable of the bullet with the ship to false. After saving, we can see that we can fire at the enemy ship and it will disappear. When we crash with the enemy, the game will freeze, and in our case, this will mean game over. Next, let's show the score on how many ships we have taken down. For that purpose, we will first need to create a score sprite. We could also do this by using text printing functions, but this would be considerably slower. Here we are creating a function to initialize the score sprite. The sprite will have the dimensions of 230 by 16 pixels. Then we need to fill the sprite with black color and set the text color to orange. With the set text datum function, we can justify the alignment of the text. In our case, 0 means top left. Then we set the text size to 2. I found that this size will give a reasonably readable font. And finally, we can write the text score. To print the actual score number, we will create the show score function. It will give us some performance gain as we will not need to write the text score each time, just the count. Again, we set the text color to orange and print the score digits. Then we use the push sprite function to actually show the score in the top left position of the screen. It will include the text score as well because it is part of the created sprite. Inside the init part of the loop, we call the initialize score sprite function and set the score count to 0. Then inside the part where we do the things after the collision with the missile, we increment the score and finally show the score. It is outside the collision code because we want to update it constantly. After we save the code, our game will be automatically started and we can see that the score is shown in orange color. After our ship crashes and it's game over, we would like to be able to restart the game. To do that, we define the middle button on top of the wire terminal, which is named key B, as the start button. We will also define a function that shows the game over screen. For this, we will not use a sprite, but send it directly to the LCD display. Just like before, we need to set the color. This is the code for the red text color and the alignment to top left. The font size will be slightly bigger than the score. And then we print the text game over at coordinates 50, 100. This is roughly in the middle of the screen. Inside the game loop init part, we define button B is released boolean variable. In this case, we set it to false, as the start button is actually pressed down when we initialize the game. And inside the game loop, we check if the start button is pressed and if it was in the release state before. Then we initialize the game and set the button B released boolean back to false. We also need to make an if statement to check if the start button is released. In that case, we set the button B released variable to true. When we collide with the enemy ship, we will also call the game over function to show the game over screen and also update the screen with the ship, enemy and bullet sprites. Let's test if it's working. When we crash, there is a game over text shown, and we can also restart the game. The start button works at any time. An important aspect to a game is sound. Unfortunately, we are a bit limited here, as I could not find any library that could play sounds and handle interrupts. So we will need to trigger the buzzer inside the wire terminal ourselves. First, we need to initialize the buzzer pin as output. Then we will create a make sound function that will work together with the delay global variable. When the tone variable is higher, the generated pitch will be lower, 
as we will delay the toggle of the buzzer at a slower frequency using the delay variable counter. When the game is over, we can create a small sound effect by looping the sound delay in the range of 100 to 400 and we will delay that with an additional loop in the range from 0 to 100. After the enemy passes the end of the screen, we will make a similar sound, just a bit shorter. The difference with this sound is that we are continuing the animations and in the other cases, the game was freezing for the time of the duration of the sound. When we fire a missile, there will be a short beeping sound. And after the destruction of the enemy ship, there will be a sound as well. To finish up, we will add additional rules to the game and a start screen. To start, we will only allow 3 enemy ships to pass. When that limit is reached, the game will be over as well. Inside the init score sprite, we will add an extra text called enemy. The show score function will get an extra parameter, which holds how many times an enemy ship has passed. We will show that counter in red color. Here we are subtracting that number from 3, so that we will see the amount of times that the enemy ship is allowed to pass. Otherwise, we will show 0. Inside the init part of the loop, we will initialize the variable to 0. Another addition that we will make is the speed at which the space invader is flying. For that case, we will need to initialize two variables. Enemy speed obviously indicates the speed, and the step skip is a supporting variable. Inside the enemy movement part, we will check if the enemy speed is larger than the step skip variable. Only then, we will advance the space invader one pixel down. We will also increment the step skip variable. Let's also increment the enemy pass variable in this part of the code. This will happen when the enemy Y coordinate is larger than 240, which is the height of the screen. We must add an extra check to when the game will be ended. This is when the enemy has passed three times. To prevent retriggering of this if statement, we will change this variable here to minus one. When the score increases by five, we will decrease the enemy speed variable, which will make the space invader fly faster. And we must not forget to include the enemy passed variable to the show score function. Finally, we will add the start screen. This is before the game loop is executed. We fill the screen with black color. Then we will create a loop that will exit when the start button is pressed. And in the middle of the screen we will print the amazing title of our game in a large font in green. Below we show the text press start. And we are done. Let's test our finished game. We see our new text, enemy, with the count. And the space invader is moving slowly. After a score of 5, the speed increases a bit. And at 10 as well. At a score of 15, we are at the maximum speed. We have to let the enemy ship pass. This decreases the enemy count by 1. And after the third ship passes, it's game over. As you can see, creating a game on the wire terminal is very easy. I hope that this tutorial inspired you a bit to create your own games. In the description below, you can find a link to the code on my GitHub repository 
and you are free to make your own changes to the game. A link to the Wire Terminal and the Seed Studio website is provided as well. If you found this tutorial useful, please like this video and place comments if you have any questions. Subscribe if you wish to watch my future videos. That's it for now and I hope to see you in my next video.